Hi, and thanks for joining us for another video in our Game of Thrones Bavarian series. In this video, we're going to cover the full process of how we made Balerian Skull that we sat in the ruins of the Red Keep. The process all begins with a digital sculpt of the model using ZBrush and the skull from the series as a reference. Now this all starts with a simple sphere and during the sculpting process we keep on increasing the level of detail in the model until we reach the final result that we are happy with. When the model is finished we simply export it over to one of our 3D printers and watch the magic happen. The material we are using is PLA plus and we are printing at a layer height of 0.2mm. Once the printing is complete we have to remove all of the support material that makes it so that we aren't trying to print on thin air. Now this can take quite a while and you have to be careful when removing all the material around delicate parts as they can snap off the print itself. If this does happen, remember that you can always glue them back on at the end before casting. Once all of the support material is removed, you can use a variety of methods to finish the model and get it ready for casting. One of the best and most common methods involves the repeated process of sanding and filling the model with Bondo or similar substance until you have a smooth finished result. For this skull however, we're going to use a hard setting oil based sculpting clay to quickly smooth out the majority of the print lines and sculpt the horns as it's meant to be an old skull and we'd rather have it a bit gritty instead of completely smoothed out.
For this, there are a few more steps required than compared to normal. The first thing we do is to make a small wall around the model to catch any excess silicone that might run off the model. Next we apply a thin coat of silicone across the model to fill in all the fine details before we leave the silicone to cure. Once the first layer is cured, we brush on a slightly thicker mix of the same silicone by adding a thickening agent to it. Again we want to cover as much of the model as possible here and we then leave it to cure. We can then remove the model and the mould from the base plate to make it easier when applying the rest of the silicon, as this will be a much thicker and we don't want to be worried about the runoff. Trim away any unneeded excess silicone with a knife to make it easier to handle. We then repeat this process again with even thicker silicon until we reach the desired thickness all around the model. We also make sure that there are no gaps anywhere and then we leave it to cure one last time. Next up comes the finishing of the mould. We need a place where we're going to be able to both pour in the resin and also remove the model from the mould. The underneath of the skull works really well for this as it's the part of the model that will never be seen in the finished version. To get started we run knife through the hollow underneath the skull and then trim round it to get the best desired hole shape. We also take the time here to trim around the teeth to make removal easier later on. Now that we've finished with the base mould, we're going to make another mould out of plaster of Paris which will make sure that the silicon will keep its shape even though it isn't very thick. You have a few options when it comes to making a mother mould. You can either make it in multiple pieces that pull apart from each other which allows you to construct more complex mother moulds or like in this case, you can cast around the majority of the mould, making sure that it will be removable by pulling a single axis. Remember that the plaster won't flex to make things easier, it will simply snap if you try to force it. Next up comes the removal of the print. Start off by taking away the mother mould and making sure not to apply too much force and accidentally break it.
Then comes the peeling process. For the skull, we're going to start from the front and work our way back towards the horns. Now the original print can become damaged at this stage, but that's not too much of a worry as we're actually interested in the silicon mold so that we're able to use um, the mold to cast in resin and that's going to be our finished product. Now some of the finer details might get stuck in your mold. In this case, a lot of the teeth and horns broke off inside, but these are easily removable with some pliers. Once you've removed all the excess from within the mold, give it a good coating with some mold release spray before going about the casting. When casting using resin, make sure to follow the specific guidelines for the mix ratios, as some will be equal part mixes, and others can be one part A to 100 parts B. So make sure you check beforehand, as the last thing you want is your resin not to cure in your mold. You can also do what we've done here, which is include filler material within your resin to bulk it out. This is great if you want to keep your casting as cheap as possible, because it gets expensive fast. Make sure to move your mold around when you pour the resin in to coat every part of the mold and try and coax out all of the air bubbles that are trapped within. You can get specific resins and other compounds that can be mixed in that will allow you to slush cast the resin, which will only coat the walls of the mold and save on material. We set up for filling the mold part way and leaving it to cure at different angles that still left us with an empty space in the middle of the mold, saving some money on resin. After the resin has been left to cure for long enough, it's time to remove the finished cast from the mold. You want to be really careful here not to snap off any of the fine details, but the good thing for you is that the resin is much tougher than the 3D print, so you should be okay in most cases. After a quick spraying with some white gloss spray paint, it's time for the painting, which in this case is just a brown wash all over the skull, which we'll then wipe away with a damp paper towel to give the finished result. Thanks for watching the video, we hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to check out the other videos in our Game of Thrones Vivarium series before you go and please make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more projects like this in the future. Thanks again and see you on the next video.